Well, hello there and welcome to the second annual Summer Sweet Corn Spectacular. I am Chef Laura Bonicelli. You're probably watching this live or as a recording on the Bonicelli Cooking Club YouTube channel or in the Bonicelli Cooking Club. Again, welcome and let me start with a little information and housekeeping. If you like this presentation, please follow my channel, like the video, watch more and like them too, and go to BonicelliCookingClub.com and take a look around the site. There are tons of free recipes on the blog. There's information about the club and the Mindful Mediterranean program, which is coming up in October. And keep your eyes open because we are adding a new $5 recipe only membership with access to hundreds of my recipes. Uh, and if all goes well, that will be in September. So this event is being done in partnership. This spectacular event is being done in partnership with the Minneapolis Farmers Market, where guess what? They send a, they sell a ridiculous amount of amazing sweet corn and everything else you could possibly want or need in the produce area and more because they sell meat and poultry and eggs and all kinds of other things like wild rice, all local and maple syrup. So if you're in the area, go to the Minneapolis farmer's market and you can start with corn and then just go from there. This happens to be, by the way, National Farmer's Market Week, and they are having a huge celebration with all kinds of festivities this Saturday, August 13th at the market. You can go to their website, which is mplsfarmersmarket.com and learn more about that, or check out their social media channels on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Now, if you signed up for the materials for this event on the Bonicelli Cooking Club website, you should have received an email with a sweet corn guide and a whole bunch of links to some of my sweet corn recipes, one of which I'm putting together here tonight. And if you didn't get signed up for that, there's still time. Go to BonicelliCookingClub.com and right on the page, that's the main page, fill out the pop-up form in the lower right-hand corner and we'll send the email out with the links to you tomorrow morning, all the recipes and the guide. There are videos in this presentation. So I have a computer right here. And if you put something in the chat, I'll try to respond to it while the videos are playing. And if there is time at the end of the presentation, I'll answer some of those questions live. So again, welcome to the Sweet Corn Spectacular. Um, and I'd like to talk briefly now about what we are going to cover in this Sweet Corn Spectacular presentation. And I need to move, okay. We're going to go over the types of corn because not all corn is sweet corn. We're working off of um, the sweet corn guide for that, which is in the email that we sent out. There are some really fun and kind of surprising facts about corn that I'll share with you. We're going to talk about buying and storing corn. I'll introduce you to five foolproof ways to cook corn. And finally, I'm gonna to put together one of the recipes that you got for signing up if you did, and that's my grilled corn with chilies and cotilla. Now, let's talk about sweet corn. I love early August and all of the great produce that it has to offer, but sweet corn is at the top of my list. So much so that I came up with this event in its honor, and every year I write more recipes for it. There are over 100, not kidding, over 100 varieties of corn that fall under the general term sweet corn. And the Minneapolis Farmers Market vendors have over 10 of them. And I'll tell you that people are very loyal to their favorite sweet corn, and they're also very loyal to the vendor that grows and sell it, sells it. Uh, the term Minnesota sweet corn basically means that the sweet corn, whatever the variety, was grown in Minnesota. There are four overall categories of corn. And here they are. Dent corn, which is grown widely in the Midwest and the rest of the world. It's um, also known as field corn or feed corn, and it's primarily used for livestock feed. It's called dent because it gets a dent in the kernel when it's dried. There's also flint corn, 
also known as Indian corn or decorative corn, which is similar to dent corn. It has a hard, hard outer shell and it's distinguished by its wide range of colors. It's grown mostly in Central and South America and used primarily for decoration in North America around harvest time. Popcorn my favorite. Popcorn is a type of flint corn, but has its own size, shape, starch level, and moisture content. It has a hard exterior shell and a soft, starchy center. So when it's heated, the natural moisture inside of the kernel turns to steam and builds up enough pressure so it eventually explodes and pops. Um, other types of dried corn may burst open like slightly when they're heated, but not like popcorn. Sweet corn, our subject, or corn on the cob, is almost all soft starch and will never pop. It contains more sugar than other types of corn, which is why we like it. Unlike other corns that are picked when the kernels are dry and mature, sweet corn is picked and eaten while the kernel kernels are tender and fairly young. If you signed up and got this spectacular sweet corn guide, we just covered the first page of the guide. So I always wondered why no one was cooking up the really pretty corn sitting in the dining room table. And now I know. I was looking at one of my seed catalog catalogs the other day and there was corn that looked like translucent glass jewels. The colors were absolutely beautiful. And popcorn, anyone that knows me knows that popcorn is how I take a break from cooking. So now let's move on to some fun facts about corn. Most of these facts were gathered by cooking club members and thank you so much for that. Um, I put it out there that I was re researching and the emails started coming in. So, corn is grown on every continent except Antarctica. Now I saw that in an article and had to do a little research on it because I thought, eh, yeah. but corn is even grown within the Arctic Circle. So there are on average 800 kernels in 16 rows on each ear of corn. Every single kernel has a corresponding silk. Every ear of corn has an even number of rows on each cob. The cob is actually a part of the plant's flower. There are over 3,500 products produced from corn, including whiskey, cola, and penicillin. Of course, high fructose corn syrup also comes from corn, which isn't a good thing. It's not a good thing for you, so just avoid that. It's in a lot of manufactured products, so read your labels. So let's talk about buying and storing corn. When you're buying corn, you look for a tight outer husk and silk that isn't dried out. I always store my corn in a plastic bag. I wrap it in a damp paper towel and I remove all the air from the bag because the air is the enemy. And I usually use it as quickly as possible, which is why you'll see me buying what I need the day I'm serving it if I can. I think freezing corn is the best way to preserve it cooking club members, you have a lesson in the preserving food class and it teaches all about freezing vegetables and there are guides as well and corn is um, definitely included in the guides. So you've heard of Christmas in July. Well, sweet corn can be July at Christmas and is such a treat to have a little summer flavor in the middle of winter. So back to buying corn. The rule is the fresher the corn, the better. It starts to lose its sweetness as soon as it's picked, which is why I want you to buy directly from the farmers that grow it. So here's a little film we did of buying some of the best sweet, sweet corn ever. This is Mark from Flam Farms. And what I was looking for was his kind of famous white sweet corn. So we got some beautiful white corn, very nice and sweet. I mean, that's the key with the white, just absolutely gorgeous, nice and sweet. You think about the bicolor, how the white brings out the sweetness, same thing with the all white here. So just beautiful corn, very, very sweet. How many types of corn do you grow? Um, you know, we grow several different varieties of corn. Uh, there's the bicolor, the white, and the yellow. Usually we have a mix of the three at market, especially this time of year. For the next month we'll have that all three kinds. So What's your favorite? Depends on the day of the week. Um, 
my kids fight over the yellow just because it's a little bit more unusual these these days. I mean, when I was their age, yellow was all that was around, but now it seems like they fight over the all yellow. I think it has a little bit more of a corn taste, maybe not quite as sweet on the yellow, and then the white is just that super, just taste that sugar right away. Overall, how many types of sweet corn are there? Lots, lots, lots. I don't have a good answer for that one. There's just so many different kinds of corn out there. Okay, and when you made your decision on what to grow? Customers love the white corn. It seems like uh, the folks that want the white corn come back and specifically ask for the white corn every year. Yeah, I know. I haven't been able to get any. So. It's, okay. it's the folks that want it, the folks that want the white corn come specifically looking for the white corn. Okay, I'm making a beautiful dish with this. I'll send it to you. Okay? Okay. Perfect. Thank you. I love the little boy in the background and what a great guy. I should mention that one thing you can do if you know you want a specific type of corn from a specific vendor, call them. You can ask for their number or find it on the website and tell them what you need and they'll pick it and set it aside for you. Then you know you can get it and they know it's already sold. All right, let's talk cooking. In the Spectacular Sweet Corn Guide, I've written five of my favorite cooking methods for you. So let's go through those now. Okay, we're gonna start with stove top corn on the cob. So I put this method first because it's something that I learned to do when I was growing up um, and I don't do it that way anymore. <laughs> but I have to say that my mother and many other mothers boiled corn for 10 to 20 minutes within an inch of its life and it totally destroyed the corn. So, overcooked. So I don't do that, <laughs> but the way I do it is here. Um, I shuck the corn, I put it in a pot with enough Cover, or enough room to cover it with cold water by at least an inch. I'm not going to boil it for very long, so I only need an inch of water. I place the pot over my heat, usually high heat, bring it just to a boil. Just start to bubbling, turning the corn a little bit, turn off the heat, and I consider the corn to be done at this point. When the color intensifies, that's it. But the cool thing about this is once you turn off that heat, the corn can sit in that water until you're ready to serve it. And I'm talking about hours, and it will be perfect. Um, that's just a fact. There's, um, there's another technique I use in a pinch, and that's microwave corn on the cobs. So don't chuck the corn in this case. You can pull off some of the silk or put it in and just put it on a microwave dish. Cook um, on high for four minutes until the kernels are tender, and you can pull back the husk to check the kernels. Cool the corn for five minutes, and then carefully and very carefully, because it will be hot, remove the husk and the silk and serve it. Grilled corn on the cob, and this is, of course, everyone's favorite. Preheat your grill to hot over high heat to 400 to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're on a charcoal, just as hot as you can get it, and then let it cool down a bit. Um, while you're preheating, remove the silk, so you're peeling back the husk and putting back a layer of the husk, and then soak the ear in cold water for 15 minutes. If you don't want to grill the corn in the husk, just shuck it completely, brush it with olive oil, sprinkle it with a little salt, maybe some pepper, place it on the grill over the coals, and cover. Cook for 8 to 12 minutes, both kinds, with the husk on or off, and then flip the corn every 2 to 3 minutes to char each side oven roasted corn on the cob. Now I mostly do this if I'm entertaining and I need to take the pressure off of my stovetop. Preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, shuck your corn, spray a baking sheet with cooking spray, place the corn on the baking sheet, brush with butter, sprinkle with salt and pepper or whatever you want to sprinkle it with, tightly wrap the pan with foil and roast and cook those kernels until they are tender and that usually takes about 30 minutes. Allow to cool for five minutes before opening, and that's just to let everything calm down and let it steam a little bit. Be careful because there is going to be steam. It will be very hot. And then peel it back, and you can serve it. This is my favorite, cooler corn for a crowd. I just love this. It's pretty much the take it on the road version of cooking your corn on your stovetop because you're adding boiling water to your cooler with the shuck corn and it cooks the corn in the cooler, holds it perfectly. So this is a great family picnic for a crowd method. Start with a clean cooler, of course, shuck your corn, put your corn in the cooler, 
Pour several pots of boiling water over the corn, enough to cover completely, again, by, by that inch. It's not gonna go anywhere, but it needs to be covered. Give the corn 20 minutes to cook. Some people say 30, I say 20. Then leave the corn in the cooler, lid closed, and take it out as you need it. It will be cooked perfectly. Obviously, those cooking methods are for having your corn probably with salt and butter or some other type of thing that you slather on or roll it in. But corn is a great ingredient in actual recipes. Now, for those of you who signed up for the guide and the recipes, smart move, it's a cooking, it's cooking video time. This is a new short cooking webinar that we recorded for the cooking club. So it's content, content directly from our library. It's fabulous. The recipe is grilled corn with chilies and cotilla. Grilled corn video goes up now. Well, hi there, cooking club members. I'm making grilled corn with chilies and cotilla, and this is a very simple recipe. So simple that you may think, does it really need a demo? Well, yes, it does need a demo, and I'll tell you why. I have two reasons. The first is that when I'm interviewing or just talking to farmers or food producers, I always ask them what their favorite way of preparing what they produce is, whether it's asparagus or blueberries or tomatoes, or as in this case, sweet corn. Now, invariably, the response is, no matter what the product is, barely cooked, certainly never overcooked, with almost no seasoning. So in its simplest form, so that you can really taste the product, which is what they really care about. Now, many corn producers like sweet corn raw. So I put some in this recipe to offset the grilled corn and give it that pure corn flavor and raw corn pop. Now, my second reason for demoing this simple recipe, many similar recipes, add oil with the acid, basically making a dressing. Uh, we're using a little canola oil spray to facilitate the grilling of the corn, but we aren't adding any oil at the end with the wine juice. And one of the reasons chefs add oil to recipes is that oil coats your mouth and helps distribute ev flavor evenly. So it makes sense that they want to do it, but it also tends to mask the flavor. Uh, some oils have their own flavor, so I opted to not add any oil at all. So just let the lime juice shine is what I say, and I think it contributes to the fresh, light quality of this recipe. So earlier today, I shucked my corn and I washed my limes and my pepper. So this corn we're using is extremely fresh. I picked it up at the market this morning. It was picked early in the day, so fresh. Um, the husks are extremely tight to the cob. That's a good thing. And I used four ears of corn and I'm ready to go with it. Okay, I am going to glove up for this process because I'm gonna be dealing with a hot pepper. And I might as well have my hands in gloves the whole time. My grill has been started. It is a charcoal grill, so we're gonna get it, let it get nice and hot. And as the charcoal starts to die down, that's the perfect time to grill our corn. And in the meantime, we'll get everything prepped for um, the entire recipe so that we can just go forward when the grilled corn is done. So I'm gonna take one of the cobs of corn. Remember I said that I was gonna use some fresh corn and this is it. And I'm gonna cut this off of the cob. And you want to just go right down the side, not too deep into the cob itself. That is inedible, so you wanna just go right along the, the side. There should be some resistance, but it shouldn't be difficult to cut the corn off the cob. Some of it'll stick together in little pieces, but for the most part, it's all gonna break apart. If it really sticks together, then you're going too deep into the cob, and that's a problem because that's really chewy and kind of not fun to eat. Almost set here. Okay, that looks great. Let me just set this off to the side here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and slice my shallot, and I have a pretty large shallot here. Really smell this, it's pretty oniony smelling. Very thinly, and I want this in rings. So that's why I'm not cutting it in half as I would do ordinarily with an onion or a shallot, just to get, the, get it that flat side down so it doesn't roll away from me. 
but I want whole rings in this. I think that's really nice. And we're going to do the same thing with our pepper. Looks like a pretty small shallot, but once you get it all sliced, it's quite a lot. I'm trying to go very thin, so sometimes I'm falling off the edge here a little bit, but that's fine. Okay, I'm going to call that good. And then these are going to go into my bowl, and I'm just going to kind of separate them now. When I stir it up, they'll separate further, but you might as well get them somewhat separated. They look really nice in these little rings, but you don't want someone to get a whole slice, so you want to separate them so they distribute throughout the salad. I'm calling it a salad. It kind of is a salad. It's kind of a side dish. <laughs> you can call it what you want to. There we go. Almost there. Now I'm using a red jalapeno. And the fact is, is that in hot peppers, and jalapeno is technically a hot pepper, it's not a super hot pepper, but um, as they turn red, they're sitting on the vine longer and they have a higher capsaicin level, which is what the hot stuff is because they've been on the vine longer. So as they turn red, they get hotter. So these can be a little um, deceptive if you're used to green jalapenos and you're thinking they're not that hot. These can get pretty hot. So I'm gonna use half of one, but what I am gonna do is slice it with the seeds. So I'm not gonna de-seed it because I do like heat. Just a whole one of these with this, these ratios would get to be a little bit hot. But of course, if you're one of those people that just can take the heat, then go ahead and add the whole, whole jalapeno if you want to. Fresnos would work really good for this. Serranos would be good too. Serranos, this, these um, red jalapenos to me are about the same heat as a green serrano. So that gives you a little gauge. I'm going to do one more. I just love the color. I might regret the heat, but I'm going to, I love the color. Okay, we'll set that guy aside. And then next, we have to juice a lime or two. We'll see how far we get. I did pop these into the microwave for probably 20 seconds, and that helps. So you never know what you're going to get with the lime. Sometimes they're really tight and you don't get a whole lot of juice. These seem really nice and juicy. That makes me happy. And there's that fresh, wonderful smell, which is going to really make this salad great. Okay. And I need a quarter cup. I am going to measure this. just a quarter cup. So that's good news. I was thinking I was going to have to go to my second lime, but I did not have to. So in that goes. Now remember, we're putting a lot more corn in here, so don't get nervous. And we're going to do a little salt and pepper. You're going to taste this at the end too, so you don't have to get too specific about how much you put in here. Just consider this a first seasoning. Stir this up. Set it aside. Let all those flavors meld together. And then I have some cotilla cheese. Actually, I think this is queso fresco cheese. I don't think we could get the cotillo, but I want to break that up. I'm going to go ahead and do that now about two ounces, I'm gonna guess on that. I'm gonna put in how much I want, which is kind of a lot, I like this. Okay, then that's gonna be all ready to go. And then now I will get rid of my gloves. And I have here some cilantro. This is directly from my garden and it's starting to go to seed a little bit. 
So I don't have the nice leaves, but it still has that great cilantro flavor. And I need about a half a cup of this, so I'm going to just kind of pull these off. I do have some regular leaves, but you know how it gets that kind of fine quality to it as it gets older later in the season. And of course, it's I never get to all my cilantro. I use a ton of it, but I still never get to all of it. Great. I think that is plenty. All right. Now I've got everything prepped that I need and my corn is marinating nicely in my lime juice and I've got these three ears of corn right here left and these are the ones that are going on the grill. And what I'm going to do with those is just spray them very lightly with canola oil, canola cooking spray. And that's just to help them out on the grill so that they don't just cook dry, which is not a good thing. Just a light spraying. No salt and pepper. We've got all of our seasoning going on in the bowl, so we don't do anything with this. And I'm going to take them out to my grill. My grill should be perfect now for, for doing the corn. And we'll go outside and do that. These are direct heat, and every once in a while here, I'm just going and giving them a little quarter turn so they cook evenly. evenly. You can see they're getting nice and charred. This is just going to take about 10 to 12 minutes to get them nice and charred on all sides. There is nothing quite like the smell of grilled corn. Now this has been cooling down for quite a while. It's not quite as cool as I'd like it to be, but that's fine. The, the salad can be served more room temperature or it can be served chilled, whatever you want. Or if you have warm corn and you want it warm, Go for it, why not? We have three of these to do. The same rule applies though when you're cutting the, the kernels off of the cob. Same thing as when it was raw. You don't wanna to go too deep. You wanna just make sure that you can glide your knife easily down the side and get just the kernels, not the cob. And look at that beautiful color. One left. You notice I'm doing this in a separate bowl and that's just because I don't really want my cob to be sitting in the dressing, the lime juice with everything else. So I'm doing it in a separate bowl and then I'll just mix it right in. And I think this is my last pass here. Perfect. Okay, well, let's do this. There we go. So here's my marinating fresh corn. And I can guarantee you that this has got some heat going on already because I know these little jalapenos have a little more kick than the green ones. Let's get our corn in there, our grilled corn. And it's not gonna be a problem that's a little on the warm side. That will just help it absorb the lime juice and the spices a little bit more. And then let's go ahead and put in our cilantro. And our cheese. It's not warm enough to melt the cheese. We don't want that going on. We want it to stay in sort of chunks, but it will, it will incorporate and melt a little bit, maybe because of the lime juice more than because of the the heat because there really isn't significant heat going on. All right, let me give this just a little taste. Mm. It is fresh and it's spicy and it's limey and it's absolutely yummy. I did a couple more stirs and I have a little plate here to plate some up. Well, I think this is a perfect side dish if you're going to some sort of a gathering and you want to scale it up, scales up easily. You can make it the morning of, you could make it the day before. You could hold off on the cheese and add that at the last minute, but you don't have to. So you have just a lot of options. For me, however, this would just be a, probably on a 
um, bed of microgreens would be just a lovely lunch, just like this. And I want to make sure I get a couple of those red jalapenos in there. Just gorgeous. And you see how pretty it looks with the, the rings of the pepper and the rings of the shallot. I just love it. Okay. I really hope you enjoy making my grilled corn with chilies and cotilla. Make it at home tonight. Let me know how it goes. Take care. Mwah. Such a great recipe. And just to recap our spectacular event, we learned about types of corn, fun facts about corn, buying and storing corn, five foolproof ways to cook corn, and I shared a favorite and hopefully very inspirational corn recipe with you. That recipe, by the way, is on my blog, or if you're watching this live, you can still go to bonicellicookingclub.com and sign up for the guide and all of the recipes. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Please make some corn, and we'll see you soon. Take care. Mwah.